When opening the project browser in a newly created file, it will ask us to save the drawing. We'll save it in a separate folder, which will then become our project folder. Once the drawing is saved, we can create the project. Doing so will automatically create some files for us. In the project folder, I can now find the sheet set file, the bsyslib or data database file, and the new subfolder with the sheet template. We can still add other drawings to our project, simply by saving them in the same folder. In the project browser panel, we'll now have the option to add this drawing to the project. This will ensure the drawing itself is linked to the central database. By default, the project will be named after the folder where the drawings are saved, but we can always rename it. This was now a simple example on a dummy project, but let's move this to a real model. In this folder, we have four drawings, one master file which contains the other three drawings as external references. These drawings are currently only connected because they are external references. This is just plain old DWG technology. However, we want to tie them all together in a BIM project, so let's open the project browser panel and click Create Project. Again, some new files are created as shown before. A project database is created that ties everything together. All drawings are connected to the project database, making sure all models refer to the same single definition of each material, composition, profile, story, and building. For some more information on the database, we can open the project information dialog. The project browser contains four tabs. The first tab contains some general information, such as the name of the database file, the sheet template file, the company and project logo, and so on. We can add these logos by selecting image files in the Explorer. These images will automatically be copied to the project folder and renamed to project and logo.png. You'll also find sheet and sheet set custom properties, which are defined in the sheet and sheet set templates. We can fill in these values and they will appear in the title blocks of the different sheets. The second tab contains all sheets and their views. Currently it's empty, uh, we will populate it later. The third tab contains all section and view definitions in the project. They are defined as section objects, and in this case I have seven floor plan views, four elevations, and two vertical sections. The final tab shows everything that's in the project folder. If you have relevant documents that are related to the project, you can store them in the project folder and they will appear in the project browser. Double clicking will open the file with a default application. Right clicking will give you some options depending on the file type. As mentioned before, this project currently contains no sheets. We can manually add sheets or we can automatically create them using the sheet set setup. This will automatically suggest a list of sheets based on the section entities in your models.
In this case, we have seven floor plans, four elevations, and two vertical sections. They will all be plotted to a default scale, but you can still edit, edit these scales here. We can choose to exclude certain sections or views from the sections list. The Sheets tab gives us a preview of the sheets to be created, including a placeholder of the viewports on each sheet. Views of the same type will automatically be grouped together if they fit together on a sheet. If a view is too large to fit on a sheet, the placeholder is displayed in red as a warning. Let's change the scale of this section to something smaller. The configuration tab allows you to change the folder name for the sheets, the naming system used for different types of sheets, and the margins. Now we can create the sheets according to the settings that we chose. All the sheets that were created are now listed here, as well as their corresponding views. Right-clicking a sheet gives you several options, such as opening the Sheet Properties dialog. Here you can change the sheet number, name, and other properties, such as custom attributes. Right-clicking a sheet view also gives you several options, such as changing the view properties, displaying or removing a view, and updating a view. Let's remove this view from the sheet. OK, let's display this view. We can see that the viewport is empty. We haven't generated this view yet. This is also indicated by the yellow icon on the project browser. There's two ways to generate this view. Update now will generate this view in the foreground, meaning, meaning that you will not be able to use BricsCAD for anything else during the process. You'll have to wait until it's finished. Update in the background will enable the use of multi-threading. You can continue working while the view is generated in the background. It is important to note that background updating only works when the currently active drawing is not the source model where the section entity is defined and not the result sheet where the viewport is being generated. We'll update this view now. For this model, it takes a little while, so let's skip forward to the final result. While we work on this sheet, we can generate other views in the background. The background update is indicated by the spinning wheel icon. It's also possible to enable auto background updating. This will update all sheets in the background whenever changes in the model were made and saved. By now, this view was generated. A more detailed explanation of the generated views will be given in the Advancing Construction Documentation breakout session. We can see that the template we used includes a title block. This block contains references to the logo and project images, which we attached to the project earlier. It also contains fields that refer to the sheet and sheet set properties. If we make changes to the, these properties, they will be updated in the title block. Let's look at importing some more information in our project. We'll start off by importing a schedule. This DXD file is actually a template that defines which information to extract from the model. In this case, it will extract certain information from the concrete columns on the ground floor. We can still make some changes before generating the schedule itself. Once the DXD is final, we can generate a table on a sheet. This table has a data link to the DXD, so if we make a change to the DXD, we can simply update the table.
Another way of extracting information from the model is through scripting. Here we'll import a Python script that extracts roughly the same information as our previous schedule. When running the script on the model, it will write this information to a set of CSV files, one for each floor. These CSV files are saved in the project folder and can now easily be plotted on our sheet, again using a data link. It's also of course possible to link external data to our project, whether it be schedules, PDFs, images or other file types. Let's copy some external information to our project. After refreshing, Everything is available in the project browser. Depending on the file type, we will have different options, like creating a table with a data link for an Excel file. Let's attach a PDF and an aerial image of the project to our sheet. Of course, Lisp is also supported in the project browser. In this example, we'll generate some named views in our drawing using this Lisp routine. And then using another script, we will generate image files based on these named views. Now we can easily attach these views on the sheets. If the model changes, we simply need to run the script again and the views will be updated. Other files like SketchUp, Rhino or IFC files can also be interacted with in the project browser. We can, for example, import this IFC model of the plumbing. We'll do this in a new drawing so that we can later attach it to the master file.
So, this was a short introduction to the capabilities of the project browser. Thank you for watching and have a good day.